Hello and welcome to colleagues from across the world. We're delighted that you're able to join with us for this session, one of our Stay Connected 20 webinar series, capturing curiosity and parent engagement for younger learners. We've had such an immensely positive response to this series of webinars, and it's our privilege to have had so many of you joining with us. A few housekeeping points before we welcome our speakers for today. Can I remind all participants to please keep your microphones on mute and your cameras turned off for the duration of the session. Due to the varying bandwidth in different countries, there may be intermittent issues with sound. If you do experience any difficulties with audio, do please kindly check the sound settings on your device or try leaving the webinar and joining again. Should you wish to leave the webinar at any time, please do so by selecting the red button for leave meeting. We want to be able to give you as much opportunity as possible to ask questions or share an experience. The best way for us to be able to do this is if you please use the online chat, making sure that you select sending your message to the host. That way, we'll be able to collate all of your interactions and follow up as necessary after the webinar itself. This webinar will be recorded and made available as soon as possible. Just a reminder to those who may find the live chat distracting, there is an option to turn off your view of this whilst participating in the webinar session. It is not a new phenomenon that teachers of young learners highly value their relationships with parents, carers and families. The home community school partnership is crucial and teachers continuously seek new and improved ways to engage with parents in support of children's learning and development. Extra support and thoughtful communication are needed now more than ever as parents step into temporary roles facilitating home learning as well as deal with their own anxieties and stress that are the consequences of the global situation. Offering parents ongoing support, positive encouragement and practical, actionable ideas is critical at this time. I'm delighted to welcome our presenters for today's session. We have a truly global panel with Laura James from Under One Roof in the UK, Lida Hoffman from the International School of Koji in South Korea, and Sheila Green, Louise Ramsden and Rachel McKay from Panaga School in Brunei. We'll hear first from Laura to learn about the work she has been doing to engage with parents, families and the community. Laura, welcome. And many thanks for inviting me this morning. Um, delighted to be uh, sharing some experience with, uh, with, with my colleagues from around the world. Uh, just a quick introduction to myself. Um, I'm the director and founder of Under One Roof Kids in London, UK, and a theatre company called Theatre Tops, uh, which operates in the UK, Qatar, and the USA. Uh, my background originally is in theatre, um, quickly led into a career in education in various forms. And I'm lucky enough now to combine all my passions in, in my current roles. Um, at Under One Roof, we've been impl implementing the uh, EYEC for the past two years in our 150 place nursery. We started it mainly with our preschool children, um, but it naturally filtered across the nursery into our toddlers and babies as well. We, like many nurseries across the UK, closed to the majority of our families on the 20th of March, as per the government instructions, but have been open throughout for uh, the families of key worker children and to our vulnerable children in our community. Um, I also have three children of my own. Uh, five, so, in terms of parent partnership, I've been sitting on both sides. Next slide, please. So when I started thinking about this webinar and what curiosity meant as professionals, we know what it means for us, but what did it mean on the wider scale when we were looking and working with our families, many of whom don't have professional knowledge um, of education or the vocab that we use so readily. Um, we work regularly with a children's counsellor um, who goes by the code name of the Worry Wizard. And she breaks down well-being into 12 qualities, one of which is curiosity. She defines curiosity as always wanting to learn new things. I like this for our work as it has momentum and positivity, two things we so desperately needed all the way through this time. As 
As we went into lockdown in the UK in March, I became aware that curiosity about our children, our parents and carers, our team, and indeed ourselves, needed to increase and deepen. To manage our distancing from, but connections with each other, we were going to need to want to learn new things about each other in a way that required definitely new and very different effort. We were going to have to be curious enough to engage and communicate through uncharted waters. I was very aware how easy it would be for a lot of our families to just slip off the radar. So to, to stay connected, we needed to know more. Next slide, please. So our nursery is demographically diverse, in a very demographically diverse area of London, um, as many areas of London are. Um, but we sit in Woolwich, in between uh, newly built penthouse flats by the Thames and Belmarsh Prism. Um, so this is not a one-size-fits-all approach, and we need a range of communication tools that were as, so as diverse as the families in our care. So we started by looking at what was available to us on social media. We'd always had a social media presence of sorts, but it was very much focused on our marketing rather than our existing families. So the first thing we did in the week leading up to lockdown was to set up our private Facebook page. And we chose Facebook initially because of that diversity within our community. We felt it would be the forum that most of our families would find accessible um, from a phone, from a laptop, um, whatever their age or background. We started off by posting daily videos from the team, which we got recorded the week before we had to close, knowing that we wanted something in stock ready to share with them. And we also went to the IEYC uh, plans. And we started to pull out our plans for across the age to see what we could share throughout the time. Where do you, do you think there's a use for audio books? Yeah. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Laura. Could we please ask people to put their microphones on mute? Yeah, so great time to catch up on reading. We have a few people who've got their microphones on mute. Can we please ask you to mute your mics? Thank you so much. Sorry, Laura. No worries. This worked really well in the early days. I'm sure many of us have done something similar. Um, parents are really keen to find a place for our community to sit in a quick, easy uh, and free way, which was really important to us. Um, so it was a really successful and quick measure. We kept drip feeding it through the first few weeks with some ways to keep the team into our families. Um, Science so will allow the team access to the Facebook page, access to the families. Um, so that they felt they could continue to nurture their independent relationships that they would have in normal times without also always having to go through us. And we managed that by myself moderating and controlling the page. We then moved on to a YouTube chat channel just to make sure that those people that didn't want to be on Facebook had access to the same material. And we continued to post videos of our team, of myself, um, and of our partners, our dance tutor, our drama tutor, our martial arts tutor. Um, everything on Facebook went onto the YouTube channel and also went out by mail out. The overriding principle being that everyone could be included uh, through the different means that we were communicating with them. Uh, we made sure that our specialist providers had access there as well as I just mentioned. And that was really important because some of those sessions that we have, the dance, drama and music, <laughs> are some of the most accessible things to parents and carers because they're things that they might have taken their children to outside of nursery. Next slide, please. We became aware that one of the most successful ways to engage some of our community, some of our nursery community was with something that had a benefit for the community at large. So engagement for a community cause, and it was the highest engagement that we had from our families. If we ask families to join together with something for an, an effort for something within the community to benefit a vulnerable group, um, we found that they were in general more enthusiastic, more united in our common desire to help the wider community. So we started two projects which is still running and which we intend to keep running. The first one was Rainbows for Care Homes, 
We asked the children both on site and at home to draw or paint or create in some way a rainbow. So some drew them on pavement, some drew them on paper, um, some made them on their windows out of various coloured stickers. They took pictures and sent them in to us. We then uh, sent them as an email to local care homes to display and show to their residents and start to build that connection in the community. The second thing we've done here um, in the UK, it's very popular to have mutual aid support groups which pop up in all over different communities. And we have set one up at nursery that we are running with our uh, community on our doorstep. Uh, and that has been a fantastic way for our nursery parents to engage. They've been delivering food, they've been offering phone support to each other, but also to other people in the community who might be vulnerable. It has also brought parents forward from our more deprived areas um, to come and communicate to us and encourage um, those relationships to keep going, which has been invaluable. Next slide, please. So, like many people and like many settings I've spoken to, we moved eventually into setting up our Zooms and calls for parents and children that weren't on site. We'd started with pre-recorded -pre material because we were still running a very busy provision on site and we needed to make it manageable for the team. Once that settled down, uh, the team were very enthusiastic to see the rest of the children. So the online Zooms came from that place. We rotate who takes the session and the content is largely up to them with an introduction from myself. Each session has been really busy. We have mixed the age groups to allow our siblings have access at the same time. Um, to make it possible for our, our working parents, but also our parents who have sort of limited data on their phone and restrictions and barriers like that. Um, we're currently working with our own IT company to build our own online classroom because one of the things that we were mindful of was the security um, around Zoom and, and those limitations moving forward. So just put a few top tips for a smooth Zoom call with 30 plus toddlers on there, things that we've learned the hard way. Um, obviously, adult supervision was essential, especially around the mute button we were finding. Um, adult supervision also essential for safeguarding reasons and adult supervision essential for parent partnership. It's a really key opportunity for them to see us teaching their child and how their child responds to us and the team. I've been really moved by the moments I've witnessed between children and my team. Um, and from a parent seeing that, I think is invaluable as we build forward on this journey. We set a small task each week. So each story we read, we set a small task and we ask them to do it for the next session. It's completely optional, um, but it's to involve the parents. And we've had some truly wonderful creations um, and some parents that I've never really directly spoken to about their children's learning, really enjoying that practical activity and opportunity to join in. We also run it like a jukebox along the chat. So we ask them to post in the chat what songs they'd like us to sing and we have a go at anything. So over the weeks, we've had some, uh, some, some great moments when parents have been singing songs to us to let us know the ones they've been learning at home um, and vice versa, which has been a fantastic way uh, of just building those relationships in a fun, um, in a fun way. Next, session, uh, next slide, please. One thing that we work a lot with um, in the setting because of our diversity of families is with everyday objects. We really encourage um, our families and our team to work with objects that children could find very easily around the home. So it, it's, it's come from a place of, of attempting to be truly inclusive um, and set tasks that all families, including those isolating or living in the areas of deprivation, uh, would be able to access in some way. So here I've just done a little example for you um, of our pirate treasure map, which is one we did a few weeks ago, uh, which was really successful and had loads of fantastic outcomes for the children. Um, so just really briefly talking you through it, it's taking a very large piece of paper. Now we've used wrapping paper, A4 paper from printer is fine, pages from notebooks stuck together. People have been really resourceful in how they've done this. We also leave piles of paper outside the door of nursery so local children can come and collect one um, if they prefer. Then they are to find an object from each room in their house uh, and taking a grown up so they know what they've taken is safe. Bring it back to the paper and draw around each object so they have a series of different shapes. Each of those shapes is now an island and you ask the children to name the islands. And then you fill in the gaps with water, boats, sea creatures. We've seen all sorts. We've had London buses, we've had zebra crossings, all sorts. 
then can you go on an adventure around your house using your map to find the way? And we've had some truly wonderful stories involving our parents and our older siblings along the way. I think the role of siblings has been really interesting to see. Those children who have siblings at home um, who have a built-in play system is uh, is a real gift, not <laughs> sometimes a challenging gift, um, but is a real gift for some children. And I've been really mindful working with our families who, who only have one child at home that they need a bit of differentiation with some of these activities. Next slide, please. So we are now looking at uh, reopening in some form from the June 1st, it looks like. Um, it's going to go ahead, we'll get the final go ahead on Thursday. Um, we're very mindful that for some children this will be like starting again, and for some it will be like we closed yesterday. For some families it's a clear choice and for others it's a dilemma and we truly have everything in between in my setting at the moment. Next slide please. So my hope is that we've done enough in connecting and deepening our existing relationships that the trust in our service has increased. I just tried to identify what the key principles have been through this journey um, which I've also shared with the families throughout and have um, highlighted again this weekend actually in an email to them. Transparency and clarity in, on all issues to do with money. Financial honesty means we are able to support each other. We're a private fee pay nursery and this was just so, so key to having open conversations with families. Tell them what is not going to happen or what isn't possible. For example, it will not be possible to socially distance from young children just to set clear boundaries and present a clear and detailed plan that is realistic. This is a situation we have no control over. Next slide, please. So we decided it became a really clear choice that the IUIC would be the perfect vehicle for us to create some magic on our journey back uh, to welcoming all of our families. The immersive nature of it was what first attracted me as a, as a theatre board. Um, and I love each way each topic is covered in such depth that the children have the opportunity to immerse and extend themselves. So we felt that this was a perfect bridge to bringing our children back to nursery life with something to look forward to, but also maintaining that parent partnership that's been so important through the last 10 weeks. So this is our plan at the moment of how that's going to look um, next week, in fact. Um, we're going to ask our families to the entry, entry point at home with guidance, clear guidance from us. This has kind of happened over the last 10 weeks. Anyway, we've got fantastic pictures of people um, running with the entry points that we'd suggested. So we hope this will be a continuation um, of what's already been happening. Um, and then this will build into an activity they do on the first day back with us, whatever their first day is. We're also thinking that every family will create um, a passport that will need to be presented in some form when they come back in. Um, our socially distance lines will be an airport queue and our lunch will be airplane food, just to really theme um, that entry point and make a really fun, uh, fun day on the first day back. The big picture section will be done jointly at nursery and online for families to join in. And with this hybrid approach is to ensure that the partnership and learning that has happened over the last few months um, does not stop abruptly. I'm really mindful of that. There's been a lot of abrupt changes for children and this, this part of the journey it was very important that that doesn't happen, that it's a gentle merging and that hybrid nature of, of nursery exists into the summer. We hope our exit point will be physically a nursery with parents invited online to share. Next slide, please. So this was something that I found on Facebook um, and I just want to finish with this. I, I, I would love to find out who it's credited to because I think for me, um, it was a nice dose of positivity that uh, was much needed um, for me throughout the last 10 weeks for my own children, but also for the children that um, we look after here. There is so much concern about children falling behind during the period of school and nursery closure. Um, but these are just nice thoughts to end on. What if instead of falling behind, this group of kids are advanced because of this? Hear me out. What if they have more empathy, enjoy family connection, entertain themselves, love to read, love to express themselves in writing? What if they enjoy the simple things like their own garden and sitting near a window in the quiet? What if they notice the birds, the different flowers emerge and the calming renewal of a gentle rain shower? 
What if this generation are the ones to learn to cook, organize their space, do their laundry and keep a well-run home? What if they learn to ride a bike, play a board game, do simple crafts, learn to bake, climb a tree, play without a screen? What if they learn to understand the value of money, what's important to live with less? What if they learn to plan shopping trips and meals at home? What if they learn the value of eating together as a family and finding the good to share in the small delights of every day? What if they learn to just be, to be more resilient, to be content? What if they, they, they are the ones to place great value on our teachers and educational professionals, librarians, public servants, and the previously invisible essential support workers like truck drivers, grocers, logistics, and healthcare workers with their supporting staff, just to name a few of the millions taking care of us right now? What if among these children, a great leader emerges who had the benefit of a slower pace and a simpler life to truly learn what really matters in this life. What if they are ahead? So I, I started my uh, email out to my parents uh, announcing how we were going to start to reopen <laughs> with this paragraph, just to set the tone of the positivity that I think is crucial we move forward with. Thank you very much for listening. Many thanks, Laura, for that insight to some of the fantastic work you're doing in London and for that prompt to look at things perhaps from a slightly different perspective. Um, I'd now like to invite Leader to share with us ways in which they're engaging children and parents at the International School of Koji. Please welcome Leader Hoffman. Hello, I'm Leader and I'm teaching the uh, reception class at ISK here in Go on Goji Island in South Korea. I am a uh, fully qualified early years and primary school and also learning support teacher, studying my degrees from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm now already for eight years here in Goji Island and uh, I'm teaching, I have taught four years the early years IPC and now for the last three years we are doing the IEYC here at ISK. And since 2018, I'm the head of the, of the leader of the IEYC. In the Netherlands, I have taught uh, on different schools, but also in Curaçao, in the Caribbean, in China, and I did homeschooling for my own two children while I was living in Puerto Rico and Spain. So I know something about how, what it is to teach your children at home and keep them motivated and doing things like that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here at ISK in Ongoji Island, we have two shipyards where uh, the, uh, and then the children at our school are from the employees at a shipyard. When we, uh, when we started with our closure for the COVID-19, uh, we had a break, we had a, a February break, and during the break, we were being told, okay, there will be after the break, no school, we will be closed till further notice. So that meant also for some of the employees, the children of the employees, that they were evacuated back to their home countries. So uh, at our school, we were already used to use Blooms for our communication. And we, within Blooms, you have the portfolios and you can also message parents really easy. So that's why we started to use Blooms also for our distance learning. Because distance learning it re really was and still is because I have children in Houston, Texas, but also in the Philippines and Abu Dhabi uh, in other places of the world, but also here in South Korea. Um, that's why uh, we really needed to make it really engaging for them that they were following the, thing, the, the unit plans and things because they at home, they were really easily bored. So we continued with where we were busy with. We had just started with our unit, uh, imagine that from the IUIC and the children were really into it. So we, according to the IUIC, IUIC unit, imagine that we made a play-based plan online uh, with a lot of ideas and also with explanations from the YouTube info videos. We also as teachers made a lot of videos for extra explanation, but also so that the children could see our face and what we were doing here. We made a lot of, gave them a lot of craft and cooking ideas, also with explanation from YouTube videos. We gave them songs, not only we, but also our specialist, the music teacher was doing that, and movement suggestions. And our IP of um, PE teacher was giving some suggestions as well to do. 
course, I'm teaching the reception class. I needed to do some phonics and math as well. So we tried to keep that included in our IUIC unit as well, so that it was connected. Normally, all these activities that I just mentioned, we do that also in our classroom. And now we only needed to upload our activities every morning on Blooms. Next slide, please. This is how it looks like on our Blooms page. So actually the parents really need to support the children because as you know, the ages that we are teaching is from two till five and their reading is still ex um, getting there. So they can't read everything. So the parents were reading the message what we were doing. We added a lot of photos so that they, the children could see what we were meaning, what we meant and also for the videos. So the green one is for our foundation teacher. At that time, she was talking about the colorful um, um, sunflower uh, fields that you're having near New York. And apparently the children of one of the parents from the children answered back, oh, here in Italy, we also have a nearby a sunflower uh, field. So that made the connection for them as well. Uh, on the purple one, that is for the reception class, we were, at that time, we changed our topic already into uh, the brilliant bug ball. So we had let the children make some um, worms from sausages that they could um, cook or fry whatever they wanted. So to keep them involved. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here you can see what we were asking from the parents because we really wanted to keep track, of course, of the learning of the children. So the, ch um, the parent got access to the portfolio. So they were adding the photos, videos, and some text uh, with it so that we, with an explanation, what the child had done and where we could react on. Also, the, um, the picture next to the, um, on the right or on the left, no, yeah, and at, at least you see there the messages that we, how we could communicate with the parents. Uh, they could ask by these little messages, uh, us things, how to do, to explain, and also we could inform the parents um, privately, individually via that site. Because normally on the Bloom's page and the, on the slide before, that uh, could be seen by all the parents. Next slide, please. Okay, only for reception, we did a Google Hangout Meet because uh, one of the first days, one of the parents was really asking, okay, can he meet his friends? Because um, the older brother was doing um, also online teaching um, with Google, uh, Google Classroom. So, and then we set it up only for reception and depending on the different time zones, we were doing it two to four days a week, four days a week that meant that was for the children here on Goja Island. They were actually every day online and the other uh, children uh, from Houston till Abu Dhabi, they all, we were only seeing them twice a week. During our online sessions, we were doing some, um, uh, we were reading books, we were doing games, we did also uh, the Easter egg hunt, I asked the parents to help us with that, to hide some paper eggs somewhere with a number on it. And then at the end with the last number, they, uh, there was a little treat. So what kind of treat they were getting, that was depending on the parents, what they were doing. So the hangout meeting was only for 30 minutes uh, every time, sometimes a little bit longer, really dependent on the activity, what we were doing. And every time we did some different activities. As for now, at the moment, we are not doing any online of any online teaching anymore because we are already back at school for one week. It's still a little bit strange what we are doing. There are still some children that are not jo cannot join us because they are in quarantine or they are not allowed to fly from the country to fly in Korea from the country where they are. So what we do instead of that there are some of the lessons I still put down on Blooms and I will put the laptop up in our uh, circle time during our circle time so that the children can have a look in the classroom and all the children can talk um, with them 
ask questions so that they have the feeling that they are still being part of our our lessons of our, our school. And actually, that is what we are doing at um, the International School of Goji here on Goji Island. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Lida, for sharing with us that work you're doing at ISK. Um, and, and perhaps not, not a unique context, but an unusual context for, for many schools where you have or you had students actually all over the world uh, accessing the school. Mm -hmm. um, our final presenters today are from Penaga School in Brunei. Please welcome Sheila Green, Louise Ramsden, and Rachel Mackay. Hello, I'm Sheila, and um, I've been teaching for uh, over 25 years. I'm at Penaga School, Brunei, and I teach pre-nursery children. And um, they are two and three years old. Next slide. Hello, um, my name's Louise Ramsden, and I've been at Panaga School for eight years now, and a nursery teacher and year group leader for two years. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel Mackay, and I am also a nursery teacher at Panaga School. I work alongside Louise. Thank you. So with pre-nursery, as I mentioned, the children are two and three years old. And the capturing curiosity has been happening with our online schooling since March the 16th. The early years methods of capturing the children's curiosity has evolved as the weeks have progressed. And here is a snapshot of things that we feel have been successful in pre-nursery. Parent feedback in the way of tapestry comments and emails from parents have confirmed this. So on this slide, the pictures show a shadow activity. You could draw it or use counters to mark it. And this art activity was very well received and lots of children took it um, took the challenge of this activity. We read stories on videos to the class and we introduced it, uh, the story with photos of the class on little lollipop sticks, asking if they can spot themselves to make it slightly interactive, so hopefully engaging and capturing their curiosity. We sent rainbow postcards through the post we wrote positive messages and poems. And luckily the post service was still working and the children received a postcard. This prompted lots of posts on tapestry and it was pleasing to see the faces of those who'd received the postcards and how they were thinking of who to send a postcard to next. We respond to the children's ideas. Um, one child was preparing lunch and then we gave other ideas for recipes and lunch activities to do at home for the family. We used iMovie to make videos of the team, so including the learning support assistants and our Going Places unit had a magic carpet ride of the team going to all different lands. So the photo in the center is um, on a magic carpet going to the jungle. Um, we used technology to help us do a mashup of team songs. So all the children's favorite songs, we had each person singing a line and we put it together. We promoted lots of outdoor activities like seed planting, obstacle courses, treasure hunts in the garden, bark rubbings, stick collecting, and we link these ideas to the different strands of the IEYC. Next slide, please. We capture parental engagement in a variety of ways. We post the activity grid on the school's pupil portal, and this is a good starting point to the week. Here, they get to select what's achievable for them as a family. 
with the time and the resources they have. Parents are asked to upload the activity and individual feedback on the children's posts is given through tapestry. The staff record hello, how are you videos, and these are from the teachers, as well as the learning support assistant. And they're added to the tapestry to engage both parents and the child. We have email correspondence between the teacher and the parents, and this takes place alongside um, a WhatsApp group via a class representative, um, just to tell them if there's anything to look out for. This um, past term, we engaged in parent conferences via Zoom. We assist parents with teaching skills when seen. For example, on a recent child's post, they were cutting paper and not holding the scissors correctly. The teacher advised the parents in the correct way and the parents appreciated the advice. We have an additional needs team at the school and they engage in the same way with the parents of the children that they work with. Parents receive additional support and ideas of activities that they could do with their children. The additional needs team have also provided visual timetables, calendars, and social stories to support some families. For the next slide, I'll hand you over to Louise. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So how do we capture curiosity virtually in nursery? It hasn't been as easy to capture curiosity in the usual sense because we're not seeing the children at play. So what we've done is we've gathered evidence from our tapestry observations. It's been amazing to see how the children have followed their own interests. For example, one child found a bird's nest in her garden. She observed it, drew pictures and got her mum to write a log of what had happened every day. And we love this sense of natural curiosity that's continued in our children. And we feel this is down to the philosophy that we follow at school, whereby we encourage children to lead their play and pursue their own interests. It's also been super to see the children so inspired by what we've provided. The example on the slide is of a little girl who saw a learning support assistant learning to skateboard and she decided to try on her bodyboard. We also tap into the children's previous interests and the interests we can see emerging on the tapestry post, as well as continuing to develop knowledge, skills and understanding. For example, an interest such as dinosaurs or sensory play and messaging. With messaging, we set up an area outside of the nursery for children to leave each other messages. And this engaged lots of the children and the parents, and it was highly successful. In our videos and on tapestry feedback, we asked the children thought-provoking questions that we hope will be followed up by parents in order, to, in order to develop the children's knowledge, skills, and understanding. But of course, we can't be exactly sure of the level of engagement that the parents are providing. We've also been able to engage experts in videos. This can be seen in the pictures showing the beekeeper. A teacher's uncle from the UK engaged with the children and extended their learning about bugs. This allowed the children questions, develop their interest and respond to new information. Next slide, please. In P1, a learning reflection video is recorded daily for the Padlet to celebrate the learning from the previous day. This has been an effective tool in keeping children engaged and has enabled parents and children to seek inspiration from each other. For example, one boy learning to ride his bike without stabilizers led the surge of other children in the year group inspired and determined to do the same. Acquiring a whole new skill has captured the curiosity of many children. One of our teachers has been teaching Makaton signs that link to their learning challenges throughout the week. This has proven very popular and it's lovely to see the children developing their communication skills. Personalised feedback and next steps provided through tapestry so elements of what is being taught become specific to their interests and development. We've been extremely lucky to have large participation levels with many parents uploading on tapestry daily. This has enabled us to monitor the kinds of activities which really hook the children 
and plan future learning challenges which reflect the activities that are found to be most popular. Next slide, please. We have found that capturing curiosity and parental engagement go hand in hand. Parents are playing a vital role in informing us of their child's unique interests. In P1, teachers have noticed that there is less engagement in some of the more open-ended activities and that parents prefer product-based activities and P1 teachers have responded to this. In nursery, we have continued with a balance of product-based and open-ended activities, both of which have proven to be equally as popular. The two forums we use to connect with parents are Padlet and Tapestry. We post videos on Padlet to engage and challenge the children, and then we ask parents to feedback on Tapestry. Teachers and LSAs feedback with suggestions of how to move learning forward with statements such as, perhaps you could, or I wonder if. Next term, we will also be trialling a Padlet for parental contributions. The hope is that this will help inspire and share ideas between children and parents. We will continue to encourage families to share examples of their own children's work and suggested activities. At times, we need to provide parents with advice on the best way to approach your home learning, and that, of course, is through play. So as well as reaching out to individual, individual parents who need advice on the way forward, we also provide articles on child development. These are aimed to reassure parents that what the children need right now is emotional support, to develop communication skills, to be physical, have outdoor time, and all of this through play. All teachers can be contacted via email, so parents reach out to us if they have concerns. We, of course, are very reassuring that learning will be adapted on our return to school and that well-being will be at the fore of our minds. We have offered phone conversations to parents, which very few took up, and we feel that this means that parents are satisfied by what is on offer. One of the big successes that we have seen through online learning is that family bonds appear to have grown. We are seeing more and more collaboration with older and sometimes younger siblings, which of course is absolutely great for moving learning forward. As our remote learning is going to continue after our half term break, we are considering ways we can further engage parents and shake it up a bit by having some face to face time with the children and together on Zoom. Thank you. Thank you so much to uh, our team from Panaga, Sheila, Louise and Rachel. Uh, okay, we have had a lot of questions coming in, so um, I'm going to try and fit in as many as possible. Uh, the first one, uh, Laura, this one is specifically um, focused on something you spoke about. Uh, you told us about the worry wizard. Great idea, says the uh, questioner. Love it. Um, you mentioned the breakdown of well-being into 12 qualities. Can you tell us a little bit more about what these qualities are? And is the Worry Wizard a persona we could share as a community of schools? Yes, absolutely. So um, the Worry Wizard is run by someone I've worked with for a long time. Um, and she's a trained children's counsellor of 25 years experience. And she specialises in children and young people. She created the Worry Wizard out of observations of the impact of anxiety um, across the age groups and wanted to break that down into a tangible uh, way of working that, that put it into something that children could articulate and discuss amongst themselves and that made it possible for educators across the board to access. Um, so she breaks it down to 12 qualities and I don't want to do her misservice by saying them wrong. Um, so I'm just looking at to see if I've got them somewhere on my computer. Um, but, but curiosity is the first one she always starts with. Um, let me just bring out some of the other ones to give you a rough idea. The website is literally it's called theworrywizard.com. She has a shop on there and it talks you through everything that you can access. You can also email her directly and she has a worldwide postal service where she writes directly to children and families and um, she also does staff training and um, so i'll just finish by reading you a few of her other well-being qualities to give you an idea so she breaks it down to action gratitude compassion belief courage empathy curiosity laughter 
imagination and community, all of which I just think are fantastic for right now. That's great. Thank you, Laura. And we, we can include uh, we can include the, the website address in the information that goes out with the recorded session and the PowerPoint. Thank you. Um, Lida, uh, we've got a question here about uh, the meet and greet sessions. Somebody really interested in them, but is asking if you could please just say a little bit more about what sort of activities that you used for those sessions. OK, I always started with our song as well, that where we start every morning in class with. So it's how uh, good morning koalas. After that, I was always asking them as well. Okay, okay, do you want to share something with us? So if they want to share uh, a toy or something else that kept them busy, they could do, uh, they could share it and uh, they could ask each other questions about it. Uh, another time I also did a bingo. I posted already on uh, the Bloom's page, okay, this is what we are going to learn about numbers. Um, and then prepare beforehand a bingo sheet. And then during the session, I was asking them, for example, write down six numbers under 10, any number that you can do. And then if everybody was finished with that, then we were doing the bingo. I did it same with some uh, phonics, some sounds as well. Uh, I started with that one, for example, because they are still practicing writing their name. Okay, you have six squares. In one of each square, you write, for example, a letter of your name, but you can't have a letter of your name double. So if you, for example, your name is with two A's, one A you write down. So it was also a kind of thinking for them, how is my name built up? And with that, I was doing then uh, a bingo as well. Another one was, for example, that, that we were doing um, playing a board game. So we had everybody had had a dice with them, and throw, and then I provided the the board game, and then they had to print it out or use it on a tablet as well to to play it. And I kept track on it while I was um, while they were busy with it, and then just throw the dice. How many places you have to go forward? What is being said? You have to go minus two or plus one or something like that. Um, the other one that I did, I did some science as well online with them so that I was showing them, for example, how the sound is moving because um, we were busy with the brilliant bird ball. They were, we were talking about ants and how do ants know where they are going, that is with the antenna and things like that. So we were doing uh, things like that, that they could watch and also that they could try something uh, for themselves. Um, yeah, the variety of activities, what you will normally do on the carpet you know, during circle time, I did during my meet and greet. Thank you, Lida. Fantastic. Great, great list of ideas and activities there. Um, Laura, a quick one on your jukebox idea. Um, the 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 comment is it sounds absolutely great how, how exactly did you organize it and is it something you replicate when children are back in school <laughs> how do we organize it i don't know if you could call it organized really um so we just used the chat fun chat function on zoom and we just said um i i did a song to start off which allowed my uh my staff member to watch the chat and before i sang i'd literally say ask your grown-up to put in the chat any song you'd like to do together today. And while I was singing, my, my staff member could then go through and literally list off all the songs the children had put and who had said it. Um, and then we'd do those songs together throughout the session. We'd just sort of litter them throughout the session. So it was quite um, sort of organic. And then if we didn't know a song, which has happened almost every session, quite often because they're songs the children themselves have made up, um, we would then ask that child if they feel they can unmute themselves and then when they're grown up will share with us that song that they have either made up or adapted or you know is actually another song but they don't know the name for it um which has been really fun will we carry on doing it um yes possibly yeah it, it's um it's nice because it comes from them in 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 every way but um but we can all do it together so i guess that and it's fun it's really fun which has been really valuable as well Laura, uh, we look forward to hearing what's on the jukebox <laughs> when you get back <laughs> when you get back to school. Um, Sheila, Louise, and Rachel, um, the tips and strategies for encouraging parental engagement really interesting. 
Um, and you mentioned about um, articles, sharing articles regarding child development. Uh, the question here is, are you considering making this information, the tips and guidance, um, available to parents now that schools open and, and, and going forward? I know you mentioned um, setting up a special Padlet in your presentation, um, but perhaps you have some more ideas and thoughts on that one. Hello, it's uh, Sheila speaking here. Um, the Padlet idea was to engage um, parents for their suggestions with the nursery and P1 uh, parent body, and just to make sure we're, we're capturing the interests of the children. And we do post on the pre-nursery pupil portal articles and information about children's emotional well-being. Does that answer the question? Thank you, Sheila. That's great. Um, I've got I've got a couple of questions here um, around the same topic. Um, and one one started with commenting on Laura's everyday objects project. Uh, her treasure map, the treasure map idea. Um, but the, the questions really are saying um, that there's been a struggle with parents who say that they're getting too many activities, that it's difficult to get a balance. Parents are getting stressed. They feel unable to do so many activities and they feel ill-equipped to do them because they're not educators. Um, they're worried if, if a school is telling them to select which activities, if school's saying don't worry about doing them all, but select. Parents worry that their child may be missing out on developing certain skills if they're not covering all the activities. And there's a level of anxiety that, that, that perhaps they may make mistakes and, and even teach their children incorrectly or cause confusion. Um, I wonder if any of you can comment or um, give your thoughts around those those concerns that are being raised actually through a number of, of different questions. Uh, maybe Laura, if I come to you first and then we'll we'll go on to our other speakers. Yeah, I really empathize with it. I've got three of three different ages and some days it's just impossible. Um, and with our parents at nursery, um, we've also got some parents who can't afford technology. They haven't got a tablet. Um, their confidence is incredibly low in terms of how they engage their children, um, right through to parents who have worked full time since the baby was three months and, and, and this is all new to them in a whole different way. So um, I have huge empathy and sympathy for, for whatever that picture is. I think my approach has been very much to just make it fun. I know that sounds really simplistic, but we only put out one thing a day. Um, it's inclusive for everybody and in all honesty it's because we're running a busy operation for key workers and vulnerable here which is also taking up a lot of our time so we have had to be really open with parents about that i think because of that we've been able to say everyone's doing their best do your best but please don't worry about it if you don't do anything all week um and, and come at it from a, a point of view of everyone being happy rather than everybody delivering an activity um, I know that sounds really simplistic, but that has been the only consistent thing I think we've been able to to deliver all the way through. And, and actually, the most important thing is that, that has led to me having some really open and frank conversations with parents. And ultimately, that's the thing that's going to make the difference for the child. And that's ultimately the thing that's going to make the difference as they return. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the my, my, my overall feeling. Thank you, Laura. Um, Sheila, uh, Louise or Rachel. Uh, would you like to make any comments or add anything to that? Yep, Louise here. Um, I think right from the very start, we've made it very clear to our parents um, that the activities that we put out there are optional. Um, so we probably had about half of our nursery um, and I think a little bit less in the pre-nursery and yet more in the P1 um, classes who've actually engaged with activities. And what we've tried to do in nursery at least is put on activities that are familiar to the children. So um, it could be a particular number game or a phonic game. And the children have done these games and activities in nursery before. So we're not throwing new things at the parents. Um, the, the children are already um, familiar with those things. And we have had a lot of parents reach out to us with concerns 
um, via email or via phone calls and we, we've kind of had to reassure them that you know the children are not going to be behind when they get back to nursery and um, if we if indeed we do go back to nursery we haven't had a date yet for going back um, so after the half term holiday we're actually continuing with virtual learning um, while part of our school goes back we're doing a very slow start um, and I think our parents have been very satisfied with what we put on we put quite a lot of activities on every day and they've picked and chosen what they want to do um, so that's it thank you thanks so much Louise um, two, two questions again that kind of go together um, and it's interesting because we, we get these questions actually throughout the webinars um, what sort of response have you had? Can you give an idea of the percentage of learners and families who have engaged? And uh, kind of an addition to that one, did you find, have you found engagement with parents with whom you've not previously had engagement? Um, I wonder, perhaps Sheila, would you? Would you? Hello, uh, Sheila here. So from my experience of pre-nursery, my class has had a pretty strong response to it. It's not a lot from every child, but there's been something from almost every child. And my colleague's class, uh, less so, so that she's had about a 70% pickup of, of what's you know been taken up by the parents and the children. And um, Louise, uh, mentioned that it's about half a nursery, about a 50% pickup, and P1 is a lot more. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Louise. Um, so the, we, we are. I am yes, I agree. <laughs> um, we we um, we are forever evolving. You know, we need to then capture and reconnect with the parents about how we can um, ignite their interests again. So it's not just um, a lot of the same. And it's something that we, you know, we meet regularly as a team thinking of things that we can do to make it that little bit different and capturing their curiosity. Uh, but it is, you know, optional for the parents to pick it up at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Um, Lita, did you want to add anything uh, to that particular question? You're on mute, Lida. If you can just take yourself off mute. I'm here. No, I have not nothing to add. Okay, thank you, Laura. Did you want to comment? Um, yeah, similar. We've had, I think, around fifty percent um, pick up, probably with the online stuff. But we've had to do a lot of phone calling around to our more vulnerable families and, and physically turn up on the doorstep with some, which um, which is part of our vulnerable children remit and that has um that that showed a slight increase as well um but yeah i think probably a good guess is around 50 percent, and, and that's that's pretty positive i think thank you thanks for that one and and i think this is going to be uh it's going to have to be our final question today but again I'll, I'll i'm going to put two together um so so the main question is is of strategies and actions that you are implementing and have implemented whilst the school has been closed what will you take forward um, and continue with as schools start to reopen? And if I just put into that question as well, there's a comment about, um, I think I think all of you made um, reference to maximising opportunities to not just engage parents and carers, but also older siblings. And is that something that you will continue to put effort into as we move forward into what's been called our new normal? Sheila, Louise, or um, Rachel? Going forward, uh, as I said earlier, at Panaga, um, we'll be continuing with our virtual learning um, after our half-term holiday. So we've had to think as a team um, how we can make it a little bit different for the children and the parents. So we haven't done any face-to-face -face time with our um, uh, children at the moment. So we've decided to start in, in nursery anyway, a once a week Zoom call um, with our children. So we've split them up. We've got 40 in our nursery. So we've decided to split them up into four little groups of about 10, um, a mixture from each class. 
and we're going to engage with the children that way. So maybe they'll do a, a, a little show and tell, or we, we found some other ideas like a scavenger hunt where they have to go and run. So it's active as well. And we're just thinking to trial that just for maybe a 10 minute session um, and see how that goes. And then for Monday to Thursday, we're going to continue with the, um, the video activities um, from myself, Rachel and the LSAs. And we've also decided to do a theme of the week. Um, so we're, it will still be IUIC linked. We just keep it short for that week just to keep the children's interest. So not doing a long um, IUIC unit for that half term. Um, we're, we're just hoping that we can capture more children and get more children engaged for the what might be another six weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we we'll look forward to hearing how it goes. <laughs> Uh, and when you might eventually start to phase in your your reopening. I can see Leader is doing a great job of answering some of the questions on chat. So and perhaps if we just move to Laura for a final comment on, on that last question, Laura. Yeah, I think as I touched on in the presentation, we are, it looks like we will be reopening on um, Monday. To Sorry, my, my mute just went on. I think. I think it's off now. Um, it will be opening for more children from Monday, but it will still look very different. We will have a lot less numbers. We're being asked to organise very differently into individual pods. Um, and our plan is to continue in a hybrid sense so that, um, I think it was Lida who mentioned that she has the laptop available during story times, so the children on site can see the children at home. Um, and we're planning very much to operate like that, certainly through June, and just evaluate how possible it is to deliver quality in a hybrid sense. I think that will be my, my main concern, or are we diluting both by trying to do them at the same time? So that, that will be the discussion I'm having with the team through June, and we'll constantly reevaluate as we move forward. Great. Thanks, Laura, for that. And many thanks to everybody for your questions and observations during the session today. Um, we'll do our best to address any unanswered questions in the information we send out to you with the recording of the webinar. Our sincere thanks to all of our presenters today. Uh, you've highlighted for us the three main areas, really, where parents can get involved in the life of the school and actively engaged in their children's learning, the home school partnership, parental representation, and of course, the one in the spotlight at this time, this time. learning at home. Um, what's also clear is that parental involvement is not necessarily the same as parental engagement engagement representing a greater commitment and an ownership of action. As our schools reopen and we move to the new normal, we need to ensure that we harness some of the positive momentum gained around parental investment in learning at home. And, and I think the message has come out very clearly that it's incumbent on us to create opportunities for family engagement that have a value greater than the challenges we might experience in actually trying to implement them. Thank you to you all for participating today. We look forward to welcoming you to more of our Stay Connected 20 webinars running over the coming weeks. My contact details are on the screen. Please do contact me about any aspect of the learning today or indeed about implementation of our international curriculum. And a final note just to leave you with, um, you will be hearing soon about our open mic session. We have a big question for you and the mic is yours to send us a video message responding with your thoughts or a top tip or an example of an activity. So do look out for that. Do send us in your video messages uh, and we look forward to sharing the mic with you during that session. If you can kindly click on the leave meeting icon, we can complete the recording of this session. Goodbye and stay safe.